Family Matters is one of the most important and famous sitcoms in American history. It aired from 1989 to 1998 on ABC station and has been compiled into a massive number of nine seasons with 218 episodes. So let us first clear the way with the premise of the show. Before we get into the show, here is the summary. Family Matters is a series that follows an African-American family, the Winslow family, who live in the city of Chicago, Illinois. The family is led by Carl Winslow, a police officer, and his wife, Harriet, who works as an elevator operator at a local newspaper. Carl and Harriet live their life happily with their three kids, Edward, Laura, and Judy, focusing on the everyday challenges of a family with humorous packs. With a clear picture in mind, let's dive into the first episode. Carl's mother, Mother Winslow, is now set to arrive at the house soon, causing inconvenience in the house, and he wants her mother to live with his brother. However, Harriet tells Carl to brace himself as it's just her mother, but he cannot bring himself to let his mother live in the same house as him, since she will take control of everything. While Carl is in distress, his son, Edward, asks him to stay over at his friend's and he manages to get the approval. In a few moments, Carl's mother, Mother Winsley, arrives, and she's happy to see his son and wife. Their daughters, Laura and Judy, give company to the grandmother, while Harriet brings drinks for Mother Winsley, and Edward also arrives to greet her. However, Carl has a change of heart and tells Edward not to go to the sleepover, but his grandma fights for his rights. Harriet's sister, Aunt Rachel, talks with Harriet about her novel, while Mother Winslow asks for food from her. After a few moments, the hot food is on the table, and Carl finds it difficult to eat with his mother. However, Edward breaks down as he is not allowed for the sleepover. After Harriet talks with Edward, Carl tells her to go confront Mother Winslow to not take control over everything, but since she's his mother, Harriet tells him to go talk himself. He gets up in disbelief and talks with his widowed mother Winslow which leads to a sweet talk between a parent and her kid. In the end, Carl allows Edward to go to the party, while now everyone is ready to embrace Mother Winslow's presence in the house. In the episode, Carl sits down to pay the bills as, of course, he is the man of the house. However, everyone avoids him while he pays the bills, until Edward arrives and asks him for a new pair of shoes. Carl declines, and Edward leaves the room with a frown until Harriet comes in, and Carl asks her to get a raise. She agrees to ask the boss for a raise, which backfires the next day, and everyone stands in the room as if it were Harriet's job funeral. Now, Harriet is looking for a new profession instead of being an elevator operator, but she returns home as the car catches fire in the street. At night, everyone at the dinner consoles Harriet and tells her not to worry as she will get a job soon. After dinner, Harriet sits outside, and when Carl sees her, he helps her to attain some motivation about getting a job, and everything will be fine. The next day, Harriet returns to her old office to give a job interview, and after giving out the perfect references in her resume, she finally lands the job a day later. In the end, Harriet feels grateful for the job and kisses Carl, since, with his motivational lecture, she was able to do it. In this episode, a whole lot of letters arrive, and more than 50% are from Mother Winslow, while Carl gets a water bill letter, which makes his blood pressure high, and Aunt Rachel receives a letter from a magazine about her story rejection. The water situation worsens, while Rachel fails to come up with another story. This situation continues for the next two weeks, until Carl finally sees some control over water consumption, and Aunt Rachel sells her brand new story for the magazine. However, when everyone reads the story, Rachel copies everything from the household, and everyone tells her to change it, even though she gets accepted. After the commotion between the sisters, Carl tries to make them settle in, but things got hotter than ever. Meanwhile, Edward receives a negative effect from Rachel's writing as he thinks he can go out with the hottest girl in his school. On the other hand, Carl tries to persuade Harriet to make up with Rachel, but she does not want to until Laura and Judy team up together to give Aunt Rachel a lecture. And it makes her realize how important a sister's bond is, which makes her remove the differences between Harriet. And finally, in the end, they make up while Carl comes back as a cripple 
since the girl's boyfriend beat him so bad. In the next episode, Carl is met by someone unexpected, a kid who mocks his big, stanky belly. Meanwhile, all the kids are going for sleepovers at their friends' houses, and Carl and Harriet finally get a chance to go to watch a movie, alone, until Rachel crashes their plan and decides to join them. After the movie, Carl returns with a frown and decides to talk it out with Rachel. While initially he plans to take a tactical approach, like the cop he is, Carl blows out the plan and says everything's straightforward. But Harriet controls the situation, and Rachel decides to see a man from a church choir, Alan Smith, but it has been a week since he contacted her. So, Carl tries to call him, but fails to find Alan Smith, until he calls on their phone, and Rachel decides to go on a date with him. Alan arrives, and Rachel is all dressed up, but nervous, so they steal him with everything they have, and Mother Winslow also arrives. However, Rachel decides to call off the date, and Carl tries to change her mood. He fails and asks Mother Winslow's help, and with the help of her words of wisdom, she agrees. In the end, Rachel goes down and finally goes to dinner with Alan. Edward's exams are coming up, but Carl is anxious as he does not take his studies seriously. Later, Carl talks about Edward's grades with Harriet, and in the end, he manages to persuade her to get him tuition. But things turn out pretty different when the next day, report cards arrive. And from the three siblings, Edward takes the cake with straight A's and surprises everyone. Now, Laura frowns for the whole day, and Edward's friend, Rodney, comes home to meet him. And to break the news that, sadly, those report cards are fake and made by him. The next day, Harriet and Rachel cheer up Laura due to her 1 B-plus grade and Edward fails to break the news of fake report cards as his parents are quite happy. So, he decides to talk about it with Rachel, and she advises him to tell the truth. A few moments later, when Carl brings a PC for Edwards as a gift, he breaks down the news, and when he goes into the room, Carl tells Edward that he's glad that he told him the truth. After Carl is done giving him a motivational speech, in the end, they're all glad that the fire is put out. Carl returns home from the station, and Harriet tells him about Edward's wasted school flyers, which also have the date for upcoming basketball trials. And now, he tells Edward to work it out. At night, they return from a workout, but it seems Carl is pushing his son too far, as he wants him to spend all day with the basketball player, now named Fred. The next morning, Carl continues to push Edward, which breaks out a little commotion between him and Harriet. But he still takes Edward to the training grounds, and there, Edward becomes rebellious and leaves the court. Later, when Carl returns home to look for Edward, Harriet does not reply to him, and he announces that the basketball player, Will Morgan, will be joining them to meet Edward. But Will spills the beans as he's only here to sell his car, which Carl wanted to buy. But a meeting with Harriet called the deal off. When Carl tries to tell him about the situation, Edward arrives. Will talks with him and he notices that the car wasn't the real reason why Carl called him here, but he goes along with them either way. At the court, Will asks Carl for a private time with Edward, and Carl returns home. Later, when Will and Edward return home, the plan has backfired, and Edward will not play basketball anymore since Will tells him to follow happiness, which makes Carl sad as he plays basketball alone now. When Harriet arrives at the court, she makes Carl realize that Edward is not happy with his training, and they return home. In the end, Carl apologizes to Edward, and they discuss his dreams instead of becoming a professional basketball player. In the brand new season, Carl and Harriet return from shopping, and now Rachel feels useless as she wants to contribute to the house since she lives there. But Harriet tells her to take it slow, as nobody finds a good job at the very beginning, until Laura walks in and she announces her new job as a waiter. When Rachel asks if there's another vacancy there, unfortunately, Steve, the one-sided lover of Lara, has taken the last remaining vacancy. Later, while Edward is on a date with somebody at Lara's restaurant, the whole family arrives to see their daughter doing well. However, everything turns into chaos when Steve tries to joke around a bit, which causes a lot of broken dishes, as well as everyone's attention. At night, when Leroy, the restaurant's owner gives Laura a paycheck and Steve a bill for the dishes. He goes out for a deposit, 
So Steve decides to make something for Laura, but it results in the whole restaurant catching fire. Carl and Harriet reunite with Laura when everyone goes into the restaurant to check the damage. And when Leroy arrives, he decides to take his insurance money and go away to another city since he's too old for a restart. A few days later, everyone sits with Steve for his childish game and Rachel decides to buy the Leroy restaurant, but he'll need Carl's help. However, he's short a few thousand dollars, so Mother Winslow decides to help Rachel with the money. In the end, she finally opens a restaurant called Rachel's Place, and everyone gives a toast to the beautiful owner of the brand new restaurant. In this episode, Rachel's lone bank manager, now a date, arrives at the restaurant to meet her, but Laura also becomes head over heels for him, Steve Webster. They decide the time for their date, and Steve leaves. Later, at Rachel's restaurant, Edward gets dumped by his girlfriend for asking someone else out, and he tells Steve about how Jolene fell in love. When Steve goes to the counter, he finds a note where Rachel expresses her love for Steve Webster, and later at home, Rachel tells about Steve Webster to Mother Winslow and Harriet as Carl spends time with Richie. Meanwhile, when little Steve enters the house, he overhears the lovely conversation about Steve Webster, and this causes a big misunderstanding for him that Rachel is in love with him. So, Steve talks about it with Carl, and he tells him that if someone has fallen for a person like him, he should give it a shot and forget Laura. On the weekend, Steve enters the restaurant all dressed up, just for Rachel to reveal to him that it was all nothing but a misunderstanding. When he leaves, Steve Webster arrives, and they dance the whole night, the next day, everyone is present in the restaurant, and in the end, they all celebrate Rachel's new date and order some good food. Edward covers Steve up in bandages as he practices with him, and to top it off, Carl seals off his face since he talks too much. Later, Harriet gets ready for a romantic date with Carl after a long time, but Carl, instead of bringing movie dates, brings out a hockey game ticket which enrages Harriet. The next day, Laura and Steve are in a geography lecture, which Steve makes a mess, and the teacher decides to pair up the students for marriage choices. After school, Carl returns home from his duty, and Harriet stands with a bandage on her head from the hockey game. But the situation becomes a little heated when Carl still does not take her to a romantic dinner. When Rachel and Mother Winslow talk to Harriet about it, she says that she's scared rather than angry. Now, at school, the marriage role plays are lined up, and Laura is paired with Steve, which makes her unconscious. At home, when Carl returns from his job, he gives Harriet a diamond ring as a present as he hears her and Laura's conversation, and in the end, they dance happily. Harriet and Rachel paint the house with new colors, but they get into a paint fight, which also drags Carl in between when Steve enters the house. The door prints all the paint on Carl's uniform. Later, Edward asks his father to take him on a driving test as he wants to go on a date. However, after the mind-draining test, Edward gives up and asks his father to take him on the date. When Edward returns home, his date arrives and she believes that he's passed the test. They decide to go on the date, but who knew that Edward would take the car and ram it through the main door into the living room? He becomes scared of what his father would do to him, but as soon as he enters the living room, Steve takes the blame. So Carl kicks him out of the house, and before he leaves, Edward meets him in the kitchen and asks why did he take the blame? Steve says that friends do that for each other, and he will take any punishment that his parents will give him. The next night, Steve arrives and reveals that he is going to a military school. He gives parting gifts to Edward, and Edward goes to the garage to tell Carl the truth, as it does not fit right with him for Steve to take the punishment. However, Carl handles the situation calmly, but he wants Edward to do odd jobs until the money for renovation is paid off. In the end, Edward tells Steve that he does not need that uniform anymore, and when Steve accidentally breaks their lamp, Edward takes the blame for it. In the next episode, Mother Winslow decides to go with her friends, but she takes everyone else's clothes, which causes a severe misunderstanding between Harriet and Rachel. At night, the family sits for dinner, and Carl asks Edward what he wants to do with his future, be he is not sure. When he returns from his date, 
Carl calls Edward and suggests he be a police officer so he can follow the family routes. And since there is a ride-along program, he asks Edward go to the station. However, the next day, Carl brings his boss. But since there are tryouts of modeling in a mall, Edward declines the ride-along program offer, which makes Carl severely disappointed in him. But Steve takes his place. So, at night, Carl takes Steve with him on the patrol. But when he gets a report of the thief, he rushes to the location and tells Steve to not get out of the car. However, this turns into a misadventure when Steve doesn't follow his order, and they're stuck in a moving train now. While Edward returns home after failing in modeling, Steve and Carl go somewhere, which gives them enough time to engage in a wholesome conversation, and later, they somehow make it home. In the end, the family reunites, and Carl talks with Edward and tells him to follow his own path rather than following the family roots. The pilot episode of season three begins with Carl going to a gym as advised by his superior and an unexpected starring guest emerged, an orangutan, Steve's new best buddy. The monkey greets Lara, Edward, and their friend Waldo. On the other side, Carl arrives at the gym and his lieutenant becomes his gym bro to help him. He uses the treadmill first as the lieutenant tells him his stories. Steve and his monkey friend crash into Laura's room, but things become serious when Steve pays money to the children to stay quiet about the monkey, and the monkey is now out of the room. In the kitchen, Rachel and Harriet make coffee, but the monkey crashes their party, and it scares the living hell out of Harriet. Meanwhile, in the gym, Carl is now stuck on a treadmill as it has a bomb in it, and if he steps off of it, it'll blow. The other gym mates get Lieutenant Murtaugh to help him forcefully, but after a few moments of dilly-dallying, they manage to defuse the bomb, and Murtaugh falls unconscious. In the end, Steve decides to send his friend to the zoo, and when Carl arrives and sees him, he decides to take a nap till Christmas. Carl decides to go on a trip with his family, but the plan is delayed as the roof starts to leak on a rainy day. Later, Carl tries to fix it up himself, but Harriet insults him instead of praise, and Carl loses it. After Carl cleans the living room, Laura and her friend arrive and talk about a handsome guy who asks Laura to study. But Steve also hears their conversation, which breaks his heart. Meanwhile, Carl and Edward try to fix the roof, but Carl's height phobia gets the best of them. And as they try to fix it, Edward falls through the loose roof directly into the living room. The next day at school, Steve arrives at the gym to battle the guy who asked out Laura, and Laura watches them both with her friend as Steve gets obliterated by him in the competitions. He bets that two weeks later, he will be stronger than him, but after a fortnight, Steve is still the same, and Laura tells him that it is not the Steve that she knew. In the morning, Carl and Edward finally fix the roof, but as they celebrate, Carl slips and falls down. On the other hand, Lara's date flexes his record by climbing the rope until Steve arrives with a jetpack and breaks his unabsurd record absurdly, which makes him the focus's center. In the end, Carl returns with a plaster on his leg and arm, and Lara arrives home with Steve, who still has his jetpack on. To show it off to Carl, Steve launches the jetpack and flies through the roof as he breaks the same spot again and vanishes into the vast sky. In this episode, Carl's lieutenant visits him at home and gives him a beeper so he can call him anytime when there's an emergency. The next morning, when Carl eats breakfast with the family, the beeper beeps and he runs away in a flash. As soon as he leaves, Steve enters the house as Romeo and asks Laura to be his Juliet. He later reveals that their school is having stage play auditions and the family asks, what if Laura plays Juliet? So Steve is the stage manager and not actually the Romeo. So, at the audition, Daniel is chosen to be Romeo, and things escalate when Laura tries to give an audition for Juliet, and they kiss. However, Steve stops him from such an act on stage. After this strange event, Laura returns home, and Carl and Harriet decide to go on a date, but the beeper crashes it, and Carl now has to report to the lieutenant. As he leaves, Steve arrives to report to Lara that Daniel has appendicitis and he cannot perform as Romeo. So the only option for her is to play Juliet for the nerd himself. 
Two days later, it's the stage play night, and the whole family is here to see Lara as Juliet. However, by the end, things go quite into hell when Steve messes up his role, and the stage is destroyed by his goofiness. At the end of the episode, Steve expresses his sadness as he's scolded by the teacher, and Laura appreciates his performance as everyone gives them a standing ovation as they loved the performance. In this episode, while Harriet and Carl sleep peacefully, Steve sleepwalks into the room and smacks Carl with the newspaper. He tells Harriet, but she believes he's dreaming. However, Steve returns and starts to smack the living hell out of Carl with the newspaper, enough to make him have a murderous intent. The next morning, when Steve enters with the newspaper, Carl is hit with PTSD and tells about it to Steve, but he cannot remember anything. Later, Steve brings a hypnosis doctor as the Winslows tell him to, and through the doctor, Steve reveals his feelings for the family members. He hates Carl. When the doctor asks him why, he reminds him about the day of the costume party when Lara was dressed up as a princess and Steve arrived as a knight. However, when Lara tells him that she will not go to the party with him, Steve tries to impress her and breaks Carl's craftable ship, which makes him angry. Carl kicks him out and says some harsh words to the kid, which makes Steve hate Carl. When everyone learns about it, they leave the living room, and even the doctor is upset with Carl. To make things right, Carl calls Steve the next day, and he arrives with a lie detector, which electrocutes the liar. After a few moments of mischief, Carl and Steve hug each other, and in the end, the whole situation comes to a close. In this episode, Steve is left behind by his parents as they are on a trip to Hawaii, and he decides to spend time with the Winslows. But Carl is already tired of them. After duty, Carl returns home and brings a fresher from the academy as well. Later, when Lara and her friend return home, Lara meets Mike, the freshman, and becomes all head over heels for him. Meanwhile, Steve reaches Hawaii and sets up a satellite dish to talk to Lara, but everyone ignores her. As he tries to call again and again, a giant silhouette covers Steve, and he's scared. At home, when Harriet and Rachel return home from a jog, Lara asks her what to do when there is someone you like, but they don't even know you exist, and Rachel tells her to dress well. When Mike and Carl come home, Lara is in a hot dress, but Mike remains unfazed and shows no sign of attraction. Harriet and Rachel arrive to serve them drinks, but they're surprised by Laura's outfit, and when Carl arrives, he laughs at Laura. She goes into the room and takes her makeup off, and Carl apologizes and promises to her that he will treat her as a lady now. In the end, Steve returns and surprises Carl and Harriet as they're sleeping. Steve now roller skates into the Winslow house and crashes directly into the trash cans. Later in the afternoon, he brings a rainforest mantis to the house, which scares the life out of Laura. However, it becomes a disaster as the mantis becomes loose in the house and scares Carl. Carl gets up from the sofa and kills the mantis before it scares anyone else, and Steve watches him kill the pet bug. Steve becomes sad, and at night, Carl cannot sleep as he sees the bug in his nightmares. Steve arrives in sleep robes and tells Carl that he has sued him for killing his pet, and they will settle this case on Citizens Court, a national TV show. At the court, Carl brings out Lara as his lawyer, and after a long and disastrous day of using the whole family as witnesses, the judge goes outside to finalize the decision, but suddenly, Carl apologizes to Steve to end the matter themselves. In the end, they tell the judge to sit down and not release his decision to the public. The final episode of this season begins with Laura and Rachel closing down the restaurant, and on the table, they find a short story made by Steve for Laura. They become intrigued enough and sit down to read the story, where Steve has become a detective, and Laura arrives to ask him for help to find the man who tried to kill her aunt. Together, they go to her aunt's restaurant and talk with the people who look suspicious and the first person is Harriet. He doesn't find anything wrong and talks with Edward. However, he fails to recognize the alleged killer until he meets Carl, a police officer. But Lara arrives and gives him a glass of juice, and he falls unconscious as it has sleeping pills. When he wakes up, he finds Rachel already dead, 
and gathers all of the family members in the house as he thinks that the killer is someone from the family. As he points his fingers at the family members out of suspicion, the lights go out as it's storming outside, and all of his suspects die one by one. Suddenly, when everyone is dead, Laura herself is the killer, and the smooth operator Steve convinces her to turn herself in to the police. In the end, as Laura and Rachel reach the end of the story, Steve arrives from behind, and they wish that he wins the story competition. In the pilot episode of this season, Steve learns how to use a scooter, and he crashes into Rachel's place, causing a ruckus with the customers. The next day, Steve and Carl set up a satellite on the roof, but Steve plugs them into the socket, which electrocutes the life out of them as it currently has naked wires. While the family watches a show called American Gladiators, Carl, Edward, and now Steve finalize the satellite with the help of Waldo. But due to Steve being Steve, the three of them fall from the roof. Carl sits on the sofa, and Steve enters. Carl loses it, but Waldo stops and tells them that they should settle this on national TV on American Gladiators, where whoever gets more scores wins. After multiple games like maintaining your ground and wall climbing, their match turns out to be a tie. In the end, on the track, Steve apologizes for his mistakes, and Carl says that he is invited to their house anytime he wants. Laura and Carl are in the kitchen when Steve makes his entrance as a chair is stuck on his bum due to a super glue he recently invented. Later, Edward arrives in the living room and asks Carl for a car for college, but he can't afford it. But Harriet gives him the idea to buy an old car, and he agrees to it. Meanwhile, Steve begs Laura to try out his super glue, and she tries to use it on her lips, but he doesn't give the glue to her anymore. Suddenly, a man at the door arrives, who sees Laura, and they both fall in love with each other while Steve tries to stop them. On the other hand, Carl buys a car from the police dump and tells Edward that they will fix it together with the help of the manual's information, which will make all of the women fall for him. While they fix the car, Laura is ready for a date, but Steve accidentally spreads his glue on her shoulder, and when he tries to wipe it, his hand gets stuck. They try their best to remove his hand from her shoulder, but it's all in vain. And when Lara's date arrives, he thinks that they're making a fool out of him, and he leaves the house immediately. In a car situation, Edward calls Waldo for help, but this makes Carl a little upset as he wants to work on a car with his son alone, and he leaves as soon as Edward tells him that they could work on it later. However, Harriet teaches Edward a lesson and tells him how much Carl was looking forward to working on a car with him, which makes Edward realize his father's love for him. Six weeks later, the car is all ready and looks amazing. In the end, Edward hugs Carl to express love for him, and they go together for a test ride. Carl decides to rest today as he's ill, but Steve decides to crash at his house with his board games. Laura and her friend arrive home, and Laura feels glad to be nominated for Homecoming Queen. Suddenly, Steve arrives to congratulate her, but Laura turns her down as she wants Ted, a guy from her school, to ask her out. When Carl returns from his job, Harriet tells him how she always wanted to learn piano. Harriet leaves to pick the kids up, and at night, Steve calls Laura to show her his new rap song, but she does not allow it as she's studying. However, Steve decides to jump in either way, and Lara confiscates his mic. When Steve asks her out to the dance party, she declines and says that she expects Ted to ask her out. Steve returns sadly, and the next day at school, he tells Ted to ask out Lara. Meanwhile, Harriet gets a guy for her piano lessons, and Carl watches them like a hawk in the vast sky. The party night arrives, and Lara dances with Ted, as she finds out that Steve told him about her and passes a smirk while Steve stands alone. At home, the teacher leaves, and Carl becomes all jealous to see his wife getting touchy with another man, and he explains his insecurities, including how someone better than him will steal his wife. Harriet consoles and assures him that that will never happen, and back at the school, Lara wins the homecoming queen title. In the end, when the judge asks who will she do the final dance with, she chooses Steve. 
If it weren't for him, she would have never had the greatest night of her life. Carl and Harriet are lonely for each other, and while they have the time of their life at the house, Steve barges in to show off his trumpet skills, but the high-pitched nerdy voices shattered the glass. Carl kicks him out. Instead of feeling happy like usual, he feels dizzy and plans to visit a doctor. But the night between him and Harriet continues. While Harriet leaves for the mall with desperate Steve, Carl returns home and tells Harriet that his blood pressure is high. To maintain it, Carl tries to not get angry and fails instantly as he lashes out at Harriet. Meanwhile, Steve surprises Laura with a car, but she is not amused as he cannot even drive. So he asks Edward to teach him to drive, but he doesn't want to make a joke of himself. And now he asks for Carl's help, and he also tells him to go away as his blood pressure shoots up when he sees him. But Mother Winslow asks Carl to teach him either way, as this would be a test to learn to control his anger too. When Carl sees Steve's car, he laughs out loud, and as soon as they start the test, Steve crashes the car into the shed. The door breaks down, but Carl tries to control himself. However, after a few moments, the whole shed crashes, and this makes Carl explode, until suddenly he is hit with severe head pain due to high blood pressure. Later, he rests on the sofa, and Harriet asks him why he skipped the doctor's advice. Carl becomes sorrowful as if he'd followed the prescription. There'd be no sweets and salts for him but somehow he will live with them. In the end, Harriet tells how she wants Carl to be alive to see his grandchildren and how important it is to take care of his health. In this episode, Steve asks out Laura for a movie night. She already has plans with the most famous student of the school, Ted. At home, Laura decides to go to the mall with Rachel and Mother Winslow to shop for her date with Ted and her parents sigh in disappointment. After they leave, Carl confronts Edward about playing hooky and would decide his punishment with Harriet. In school, Steve East drops on Ted and learns that he's spreading rumors about Lara that he scored with her. And when he tries to confront her, Ted and his goons lock him up in his locker. After three hours, Lara takes him out of the locker and tries to explain to him about Ted's lie. But since he's a nerd, he cannot speak it out properly and Lara ignores him. When she returns home, she receives a disgusting call from Alex. When she tells his friend about it, she tells Lara about the rumors that Ted has spread, and she finally realizes what Steve was trying to tell. She cries and talks it out with Harriet, who decides to help her fight back the rumors without talking to Ted's parents. The next day in school, Edward confronts Ted, and he makes him spit out the truth that nothing actually happened between them. And as soon as he's about to hit him, Lara arrives and stops him. To shut this whole situation down, Ted says that he loves Lara, but since he put her in such a bad spot, she'll have to think about this lover's misconception. In the end, Laura appreciates Edward for his help as a brother and apologizes to Steve for overlooking his advice. In the final episode of the season, Carl brags about his cooking skills as he buys a brand new expensive grill. But as soon as he tries it out, it explodes and breaks through the kitchen window. In the afternoon, Steve arrives and asks Laura's opinion about a girl who likes him but he doesn't know what to do. Lara tells him to care about her feeling, and he leaves. Meanwhile, Carl looks for another job to help him bring extra cash to fix the kitchen, and he decides to join Edward's workplace, Mighty Weenie. While Edward shows him the basics, Lara talks to Aunt Rachel about how she started to miss Steve. Rachel tells her that when she was not focusing, she made herself a friend of his. Carl's faced with a setback, as Edward becomes his new boss after his promotion, and Edward makes Carl do all the work. When they reach home, the formality reaches between them reaches an end, and now they're son and father. The situation escalates when Harriet confronts them both, and they enter the infinite blaming loop. Harriet shuts them down and gives them a lecture to not let their professional standings hurt their son and dad relationship. At night, Steve returns with his woman, Myra, when she goes into the bathroom for a minute, Laura tells Steve that she missed him, and the situation between them reaches a certain point that makes Myra jealous. In the end, Myra announces to Laura that nobody can steal Steve from him, and from now on, it's a war between these two ladies. The new season starts with Steve trying to move into Winslow's house. Carl gets grumpy because Steve is moving into his house. Harriet notices Carl's grumpiness 
and suggests that they should go to a camp on the weekend for relaxation while Steve is trying to settle in. Carl agreed on that, and when Carl was about to leave for the campsite, Steve showed his transformation chamber and told him that this chamber could make things bigger. As an example, Steve took a normal brush and put it in a chamber, and the brush got bigger. Carl noticed all of this. Suddenly, Steve's transformation chamber started going berserk. Because of the chamber, Carl and Steve get shrunk to two inches tall. They both were the only ones in the house, so they didn't have anyone normal in the house to help them. Carl gets mad at Steve, but realizes that they should assess the situation first. They tried to reach the chamber, but couldn't reach it because it was too far away. They started working together to survive from the house cat. After all of this, Carl confesses to Steve that he didn't want Steve to move in. Carl tells him that Steve is such a good friend, and he's always there for everybody in their bad times. At the end of the episode, Carl and Steve get back to being normal. Laura and Steve accidentally saw each other naked in a bathroom. They both are embarrassed talking to each other. Myra sees Laura, as Steve can't talk to each other normally. So she asks Steve what happened between both of them. Steve was embarrassed to talk about this incident. Edward saw them being awkward, and when he got to know what happened between them, he told them about his own experience of catching Carl and Harriet naked as a child. He tells Laura and Steve that if he can get over this, then they both can get over their situation too. Steve and Laura talked about it, and they became normal again. Meanwhile, Carl's neighbor, Larry Johnson, asks Carl for a favor of keeping his wife's gift. Harriet gives Carl a gift for their anniversary, and she mistakes the gift of Larry's wife as her anniversary gift. Carl tells Larry about the situation and tells him that he'll buy him a new bracelet, but it's too expensive to afford. So he tells Harriet about the bracelet, that it doesn't belong to her, but the gift belongs to Larry's wife. Harriet wasn't disappointed about the bracelet, but she was disappointed by Carl forgetting about the anniversary. But Carl told her he hadn't forgotten the anniversary and gave her a gift he bought for her. Steve met a beautiful bug collector online. When Steve met her, he started to fantasize about the bug collector. Steve feels bad about his fantasies and thinks that it will disturb his relationship with Myra. He talks about his fantasies to Lara that he doesn't feel right about this because he fantasizes about kissing another girl. Lara tells her it's completely normal to have fantasies. Everybody has their fantasy. Lara tells Steve that he didn't cheat on Myra just by thinking about kissing another girl. Lara encourages Steve to tell about all of this to Myra, otherwise he won't feel better. Steve thought Myra would get angry at him for thinking like this, but when Steve tells her the situation, Myra understands Steve. She tells Steve that it's normal to have desires she can't control, but Steve shouldn't act on his desires. Meanwhile, Herod asks Carl to allow her boss, Nick, to participate in Carl's weekly poker game with his friends. Well, Carl can't deny it because Nick wasn't her wife's boss. When Nick joins the game, Carl introduces him to his other friends at the game. Nick gets so rude. When he starts winning the game, that he ruins the whole mood of the game for everyone. The next week, Harriet loses her patience with Nick and tells him she can't stand this disrespectful and rude behavior. Harriet was expecting that she'd get fired, but Nick revealed that he was transferred to a different apartment, so he couldn't fire her. Carl and Harriet get their revenge on Nick by throwing pie in his face and kicking him out of the house. The new episode starts with the teacher telling the class that he'll be absent for the next two days because of the surgery, and instead of the substitute teacher, the teacher announces that he is assigning Steve Urkel as substitute teacher for the next two days. On the first day, everyone made fun of Steve and messed with him. The class was dismissed because Steve couldn't handle the class. The next day, we see good-looking Stefan as the teacher instead of Steve. Stefan was able to handle the class very well. He is popular with the girls. Stefan gives dating advice to some of the students having problems finding a date for the homecoming dance. The next day, when Harriet came home, she saw the clean house and couldn't believe her eyes. Carl tells her that he hired a maid to handle the house, but Harriet wasn't happy with it. Carl was displeased meeting the new servant and fired him. Carl apologizes for the argument they had before. When Edward brings his girlfriend Greta home after the curfew, her father gets angry at them for breaking the rule. 
Her father refuses to allow Edward again for a month. Edward tells him that he might be overreacting. Edward can't see Greta for a month now. Edward asks for help from Steve. He wants Steve to act as Greta's new date and bring her out so Edward can go out with her again. When Greta's father finds out about this, he gets mad at Steve and fires him. Edward was listening to all of this and he accepted the responsibility of taking her out. After he accepted the responsibility, her father fired him as well. Steve calls out Greta's father for his actions and tells him that he is the type of person to fire people for being responsible for their actions. Her father thinks about this and tells Edward that if he loves her daughter, then he can wait for one month. Edward agreed on that. Meanwhile, Carl finds himself in trouble with the tax man. The tax man tells Carl about how much he owes to the government. Carl tells him that he doesn't have that much money, but in the end, Carl finds out that he is entitled to a refund. In the following episode, Steve goes on a trip to Russia to visit his parents. The Winslow family was so happy they didn't have to see Steve for a week. They could live in peace. The Winslow family starts celebrating. As Steve leaves the house, Myrtle shows up. The Winslow family wasn't pleased seeing Myrtle because Steve had just gone on a trip now. And they had to deal with Myrtle. Myrtle asks him about Edward, and she's now hungrier than ever for Edward's affection. When she sees Edward with his girlfriend, she gets jealous. Myrtle and Greta start to fight. Edward stops Greta from fighting. Greta tells Edward she'll not tolerate Myrtle anymore. They both decide on a dinner plan, and Myrtle hears about the plan, but Myrtle interrupts it. Edward saves Myrtle from drowning. Carl tells Harriet to call someone to fix the garbage disposal. When Carl sees the estimated repair amount, he is speechless. Harriet gets angry at him because he assigned her to take care of the garbage disposal. Carl realizes Harriet is upset, but Harriet says she's more hurt than upset because when he saw the estimated amount of the garbage disposal, he talked down to her. Carl realizes his mistake of not treating Harriet right and apologizes to her. Steve and Curtis Williams get on each other's nerves. Steve challenges Curtis to a race. Steve has no choice but to modify his car for the race. Laura told Myra that Steve always gets jealous of every guy she meets. Myra gets frustrated with Laura's selfishness. Myra tells her about the bet Steve made and all of this just because of her. He doesn't want her to ride in a car with Curtis because it's dangerous. Myra reveals the real reason to Laura that if he loses the race, then he will lose his car and 500 bucks in the race. Laura didn't know that. She thought Steve was just interrupting her love life again. Steve wins the race, but he is nearly injured. Laura apologizes to Steve and Myra for poor judgment. Meanwhile, Edward brings his friend to his home and Carl is chilling. Carl gets disturbed by Edward's friend. Following the next scene, Edward brings his friend into the house at midnight. They create a mess in the kitchen which makes Carl wake up. Carl got angry with Edward. Edward offers rent to pay in order to bring friends to his home. Carl tells him it's not about money, rather it's about responsibility and compromise. Having friends over disrupts the family. Edward understands that and learns how to compromise by inviting his friends to his home. At the start of a new season, Steve invented a device which is called a transportation device. Steve introduces it to Myra. Carl accidentally stepped on the teleportation device and got teleported to New York. Steve tells about all of this to the Winslow family. Everyone starts questioning Steve. During Carl gets back home using that teleportation device and confirms that it works for human beings too. Carl suggests to the family that they should go to New York. They all use the teleportation device to transport to New York. Carl, Harriet, and family are enjoying themselves at the cafe, but Edward's carelessness causes an accident in the restaurant. Cafe owner got angry at Edward. Carl's a cop, so he's experienced handling situations like that. He tries to talk with the cafe owner, so they come up with a good conclusion. Carl and the cafe's owner concluded that Edward had to work at the cafe for two weeks. Otherwise, he would have to go to prison. Meanwhile, Laura and Stefan are having a good time in New York. Stefan says that he doesn't have any past. Without the past, he can't be complete. Laura and Stefan saw a bunch of models fighting. The cameraman offered Stefan a job to become a model and he accepted the offer. Meanwhile, 
Steve is seduced by Nicole, a French girl trying to steal a teleporter's blueprint or technology. Nicole has a plan of going on a date with Steve and makes him give the information about the technology of teleportation. In the next episode, Edward is working at the cafe, and he's frustrated because of the new owner. The cafe's owner is always mad at Edward. Carl asks him about the new job. Edward explains that the job is displeasing because the owner of the cafe is crazy. Carl tells him that he caused the crash, so he has to face the consequences. Steve and Stefan do commercials together. Stefan and Lara get the offer to participate in the fashion show. Meanwhile, Nicole goes out with Steve. He realizes that Nicole is with her because of his invention. Nicole wasn't able to get the information about the teleportation device according to her plan, so Gilbert had to capture him. Gilbert captures Steve and holds him hostage inside the Paris Opera House. Gilbert asks for the blueprints of the teleportation device. Steve says it's in his brain, but he can't get the blueprints out of his mind. Gilbert then threatens Steve, saying he'll kill him if he doesn't build a new device. Gilbert forces him to build a teleportation device. Steve builds it, but Nicole tells her that Gilbert is planning to finish him when it's all over. Continuing with the trilogy, Edward is frustrated as usual because of the boss, but he sees the woman, whom he has a crush on, and makes him careless enough to cause a car crash into the cafe. Meanwhile, Stephen gets to know he'll lose his life after building the device. Nicole convinces Gilbert not to kill Steve, because he's a human being too, and he built a teleportation device for him. Gilbert refuses and threatens Nicole too. The teleportation device is ready. Steve tells Gilbert to try it, but he tells Steve to do it, because what if it's a trap? Steve and Gilbert get teleported into the hotel room of Carl. Carl helps Steve catch Gilbert, but the situation gets messier. Somehow, Steve, Carl, and Nicole escape from Gilbert, but Gilbert starts chasing them. Following the chase, Gilbert got arrested, and Carl saved Steve's life. Steve thanks Carl for saving his life, and Carl says it's nothing compared to what he did for the Winslow family. The Winslows head back home and leave Stefan in New York. The life of the Winslow family begins in Chicago. Steve enrolls in BIT, which is miles away from Chicago. Steve gets emotional when leaving everybody. Steve meets new friends in college and gets along well, but he misses everybody in Chicago. He writes a letter to the Winslow family for someone to attend parents' weekend. Carl was happy because he hadn't seen Steve for three weeks. When the Winslow family got to know about the parents' weekend, Harry convinces Carl to attend because it might mean so much to him. Carl attends it, and Steve gets happy and tells him about how much he misses everybody at home. When Carl is about to leave, Steve says how much it means for him for Carl to pay a visit. Then Steve decides to go back to Chicago to the Winslow family. Meanwhile, Myra feels alone, and Laura had curfew problems at home. She said it had been better if she could move out. Myra tells her she could arrange an apartment where she just needs a partner. Laura agrees to live with her. It gets really difficult for Laura to live with her because of the strange personality. Laura confesses she can't live with her, and then Myra explains everything was set up because she felt alone. She feels alone because Steve is gone and one friend of hers is moving out, so she feels lonely. She thought she could be friends with Lara. Lara tells her she can't live with her, but they can stay friends. Orphaned 3J doesn't want to be moved to another orphanage. Some people interviewed him, but they adopted another little girl. 3J ran away and snuck into Winslow's house attic. Everybody was worried about him, so they started finding him. 3J was hiding himself in the attic, only Richie knew about him. He wanted someone to adopt him. Steve tells them that 3J is sleeping upstairs. Harriet and Carl find 3J in the attic. 3J tells them nobody would ever adopt him, and he doesn't want to go to the shelter again. Carl tells him that they'll adopt him. Meanwhile, Edward was going on a date. He teased Lara for sitting at home and waiting for Stefan. Lara tells her it's loyalty. She's in a relationship with Stefan. Following the moment, Lara gets romantic with Curtis, her friend watches them. Lara tells her it was a really good moment, but the friend reminds Lara she said the same thing about Stefan. The episodes start in art class, where Edward's girlfriend Greta joins art class as a model. When Steve sees Greta nude in art class, he tells Edward about this. Edward got angry 
and got mad at Greta for being nude. He says she should stop modeling in art class and shouldn't get naked. This caused an argument between Greta and Edward. Edward didn't know the reason why she was doing that. When Laura sees Edward like that, she reveals a shocking truth about Greta. She told Edward that her father cut her off financially because she was dating him, and she's working as a model in art class to cover her expenses. She didn't tell Edward about it because she didn't want Edward to feel guilty about it. Edward felt sorry for what he did. Edward apologized to Greta. He told her that he didn't know about Greta's reason for doing this. But now that he knows, he's apologizing for not understanding her. Greta accepts the apology and tells him that she did for herself too because she was tired of her father pushing her around and she didn't want Edward to also push her around. Nick takes Richie and 3J's football and refuses to give it back. Carl tries to take the ball back or get revenge on him, but Harriet tells him to not take revenge. Nick was about to get arrested for trying to break into his own house. Steve introduces a creepy dummy, which looks exactly like him. Steve wanted the dummy to move and talk. It was heavy thunder outside. The lightning hit the dummy sitting on the chair, and it sprang to life. Steve saw the dummy and was shocked. Steve tries to tell the Winslows about the dummy, but they don't believe him. Steve thinks perhaps something is wrong with him, but the dummy tells him that there's nothing wrong with him. The dummy is alive. Steve was shocked at how the dummy could walk and talk. The dummy replied, he didn't want the dummy to move and walk and talk. The dummy tells him he's after the Winslows and he won't leave a single member of them alive. He tries to convince the Winslows about the dummy, but they tell him there's something wrong with him. Steve locks up the dummy, but he artfully escapes. One by one, he takes out every Winslow. Steve realizes he had to fight the dummy himself to stop him. Steve fights the dummy and detaches all of the dummy parts, but all of the pieces magically reattach and attack Steve, nearly finishing him. Steve awoke from a horrible nightmare. The final season opens up with Lara asking Edward to present himself in the kissing auction with the highest female bidder, and Steve decides to join too. In the kitchen, Harriet arrives home and she celebrates with Carl about her promotion, but Carl becomes jealous as he learns she will make more money than him. Meanwhile, Lara and Steve eat lunch in the kitchen, and Steve finally decides to change himself for good. At night, Carl finally tells Harriet why he is upset, but instead, they have a fight. On the other hand, while Steve takes speech therapy classes, the kissing auction at the club begins. The auctions turn out to be pretty good, and at home, Carl gets a new job and tries to flex it on Harriet, but instead, this turns into a heartwarming lecture about teamwork. And as a husband and wife, they should act as a team, not let their salaries become a competition. Now that their quarrel reaches an end, Steve arrives at the club, but no girls bid for him, except the lady herself, Lara. In the end, she puts up a massive bid of $100, and when nobody bids, she finally kisses Steve. Steve waits for Lara in the house, and Myra comes to see him. After he shows her the boom shakalaka, she goes away. At night, Lara decides to go to a party with a friend and borrows her mother's diamond earrings. Later, Steve celebrates his birthday alone, but when Carl sees him, he tries to cheer him up and decides to spend time with him this weekend. The ladies return home, and Lara is missing an earring. To cover this mess up, she decides to work overtime, and the next day, Carl's commissioner from work arrives. Commissioner Geis invites Carl for duck hunting on the weekend, and Steve tries to join him as well, but Carl runs away to not get folded with him in the commissioner. Carl and Geis arrive at the lake to hunt ducks, but Steve follows them, and now they're stuck with him. At home, Harriet gets ready to give a farewell to someone, and when she decides to wear the diamond earrings, Laura does everything in her power to stop her. However, Harriet knows about Laura's problem, and she shows her the diamond earrings she lost, returned by the club's owner. After clearing the matter out, Harriet leaves for a party. Meanwhile, the duck hunters fail to locate any signs of the duck until Steve uses a duck whistle, and all of them come flying. Carl and Guy shoot at them, but they fail to hit any. This makes Steve angry, as he does not think they would be hunting ducks literally. And when they see one of the ducks in a the lake, they aim at it. But since it's a mother, they leave it alone. 
In the end, Steve takes their guns and accidentally shoots the boat, causing it to sink. Edward tries to study, but Steve and Myrtle both decide to annoy him down to the bone. Before Myrtle enters the house, Edward tries to kick her out, but she slips inside either way. She comes to invite him to an event in Mississippi, but Edward declines and she goes away. In the living room, Laura's friend waits for her with Carl and Steve. When Laura comes down, Carl tells him to change her clothes as it's too revealing. She tries to argue that she's old enough to wear the clothes she wants, but Carl doesn't care and she changes her clothes. However, he does not know that she's wearing the same clothes underneath and goes to the party. The next day, Myrtle asks Edward to go with him, but he denies it again and gets caught in an accident. But at the last second, Myrtle pushes him and gets hurt instead. At the hospital, the doctor tells Edward that she might not wake up, but as soon as Edward sits down and says that he will take her to the debutante ball, she opens her eyes and crashes into him. Meanwhile, Carl watches the TV and sees his daughter dressed up like before, which makes him super disappointed in her. Now, at the ball party, Myrtle's partner is Edward, and everyone at the party greets them while they stare at her broken arm. At home, Laura apologizes to Carl, and he says that since she's a young lady now, she has to start acting like one. Returning to the ball party, Myrtle almost gets kicked out, but the host saved her, and Edward takes the final dance with her. In the end, the host and Steve sing together at home. Laura and Steve's wedding approaches, and they settle out the guest list. Suddenly, Buzz Conrad, the famous astronaut, arrives at the house to tell Steve that he is selected as the first student to go into space by the ISS, and he falls unconscious due to excitement. When he wakes up, Buzz tells him that he scored the highest in the science fair, and they're already making a project from his equations about gravity. They want Steve to go to space and test the device, but he hesitates as the marriage date approaches. However, Lara tells him that this is the chance of a lifetime, and he decides to go. Now, six months pass, and Edward has graduated from the police academy, and everyone in the house celebrates his graduation. Carl gives Edward a bulletproof vest that saved him long ago as a gift, and if it was not for that vest, he wouldn't be here. Suddenly, Steve returns from his space training, and he reconciles with Lara after six months. The family sit down to watch the rocket launch, but due to some problems, it gets delayed. However, after a few minutes, the countdown continues, and when the rocket launches, Lara wishes that he just returns home well. At night, Edward returns home from duty and tells Carl that he has been reassigned and is now a parking ticket attendant. Carl says that he'll talk with Geis, but nothing is promised. Back to Steve, he has reached space with the crew, but the spaceship is hit by a satellite. In the end, the spaceship is set astray from his path, and now they're lost. The final episode of the series begins with a recap of the previous episode. After the satellite hits the space shuttle, the controls of the ship are unstable and the hull is breached. The pilot stands off from their seats and moves to stabilize the controls so the ship can be fixed. However, both of them strike their hands into each other as there is no gravity in the ship and they fall unconscious. The flailing of the ship continues and Steve is now alone. The control station tries to connect with the ship and Steve tells them the current situation. According to the control station, if Steve fails to stabilize the ship, it will fall into the atmosphere and it will become a crispy critter. So, the control station tells Steve what to do, and with one minor step, the course is corrected. The pilots are unconscious, and Steve uses his machine to put gravity into the ship, and they fall. On Earth, the news of the trouble ship breaks, and Lara is worried about Steve. Carl arrives home, and he talks about Edward with Harriet. Edward reveals that it was Harriet who suggested Geis reassign Edward's duty, as she was scared for him but Carl tells her that she budged into his career. Of course, this makes Harriet angry, and she leaves. Back to space, the control station tells the pilot to remove the satellite manually, but since the ship is unstable, Steve has to do it, and he becomes happy when the pilots become doubtful of the nerd. Meanwhile, Edward continues his parking duty, and as he tries to sign a parking ticket, a robber runs away and shoots, and Edward follows him. In the alley, things heat up as the robber shoots at him, but thanks to the bulletproof vest, 
He's saved and catches the robber. He returns home and Harriet puts some ice on his wound. But since it was technically her fault, Ever tells her mother that since it is his life, he can make his decisions as he pledged his life to save civilians. Later, Harriet apologizes to Carl. When everybody sees the news, they learn that Steve has removed the satellite, but due to the weight, he floats away into space. The situation is hopeless as the gravity machine also breaks down. But suddenly, the control stations mention about a booster in the satellite, and Steve uses it to push himself to the ship. The day is saved, and after the ship lands on Earth, the Winslows reconcile with him. In the conclusion of the finale, Steve meets Lara again, and they kiss as the curtains for Family Matters close. Thank you for watching. If you found our video worthy of your time, consider subscribing, and don't forget to leave a like on this video. We will see you soon in the next one. And for now, take care.